multicast Ethernet is what um, uh, video over IP is about, okay? Any video over IP installation will do multicast. So what is multicast? Well, it's fairly easy. In Ethernet networks, you have three types of communications. One of them is called multicast. It's basically one to many. So your video is uh, one, and that video is going to be sent to many uh, possible displays, okay? And you don't want to do unicast or broadcast. Let me explain the difference between the three. Take a Ethernet network at home or uh, here at the show or in any uh, network installation. You have three types of communication. The most common is unicast, one-to-one. -one. So you are sending an email to somebody. You technically send packets from you to the email server. That's a one-to-one -one communication. You don't want to do that with your videos, okay? Because you would flood the entire network, okay? Broadcast is a, a, a second form of communication. Uh, it's, a, you know, um, one uh, 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 source and everybody getting that information. That's typically uh, discovery protocols, such as Bonjour, you know, with your small Apple products. And uh, you certainly don't want to do that either for video. Uh, that would be, uh, you know, uh, very, very dangerous. So multicast is a beauty. Multicast Internet uh, lets you uh, uh, send a message from one source to several interested receivers only. And that's not a multiple one-to-one uh, uh, -one type of communication. There's only one communication egressing from the source and this communication is going to be replicated by the system to the destinations, okay? Thanks to the multicast invention, uh, internet was made possible, okay? So, multicast communications need rules, and these rules are called IGMP. The IGMP uh, protocol is the set of uh, rules that really allows multicast communications uh, to happen. So let me explain that. See that little installation? You have a typical camera that is a camera over IP and you have my key over there and you want to send that video on two PCs only. Okay? How is it going to be made possible? Well, IGMP protocol with those components such as IGMP snooping and IGMP querier are going to let the network understand where my key needs to go, okay? So your backend network infrastructure must be capable of understanding IGMP uh, protocol. Let's take that very simply, and don't be afraid, that's very, very simple. Historically, based on this IGMP protocol, you have a source with your my key video. First, you have a IGMP querier. This is like a multicast router. This component will actually send all the questions, all the queries to the clients to, in the network and ask who is interested in receiving my key video, you know? And the clients, the host, will actually answer that question, yes, I'm in, or no, I'm not interested, I don't want it, okay? So the IGMP querier gives those uh, 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 messages, or ask those questions, and get the responses. The second very important component is called IGMP snooping. Usually this happens on the switch itself, okay? The IGMP querier can be external. The IGMP snooping got to be on the switch because IGMP snooping will listen to those messages and as soon as IGMP snooping will hear yes I'm in the switch will actually open the 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 the, the path for the Mikey video to join uh, that that receiver so the IGMP snooping uh, uh, feature will actually build those groups of interested uh, receivers just by understanding listening those IGMP joins and IGMP leaves queries. So the good news is that it might seem complicated, but uh, now you have switches 
that are capable of both. Okay, so most of uh, mid-range to high-end switches in the industry have the IGMP querier and the IGMP snooping embedded uh, together into the switch platform. Okay, if you don't have that, my key will be broadcasted everywhere. That's absolutely not what you want to do. Okay, so IGMP snooping, IGMP querier are key and best when it is directly on your switch platform. So, did you hear sometimes about VLANs on Ethernet networks? Well, let me tell you that multicast traffic and VLANs, that can become quickly a little bit tricky, okay? Because multicast Ethernet, everything you just saw, IGMP querying, IGMP snooping, it, it doesn't, it's not meant to, be, to go across VLANs, you know, it stays within a typical layer 2 VLAN. A VLAN is typically a slice of your network, right, so that you have security, so that you reduce the broadcast domain. It's very common at customers with, for instance, finance VLANs and, and sales VLANs. You divide the networks into separate entities. If ever you are coming to an installation for video over IP, and you see that you have uh, VLANs on them, I would largely advise to consider still layer two implementation with such a multicast VLAN registration, okay? Because if not, you will then be going routing, multicast routing, and this is uh, quite, this is more difficult, okay? So the multicast VLAN registration is a great invention that is available on many switches uh, that lets you allocate one VLAN for your multicast. So you remember your IP camera with my key? This should be into the multicast VLAN. And all your sources, all your encoders for video over IP should be on that multicast VLAN. And by enabling that multicast VLAN registration, you will then instruct the, 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 the switches to deliver that multicast to other VLANs, okay? And this will let the IGMP querying and the IGMP snooping happen magically across your VLANs. This is really good because it's very simple to configure and it's, it's scalable and you stay out of the complexity of multicast routing, okay? Well, now, well, you know everything, almost. So let's try to understand how you are going to select your backend uh, network when it comes to, uh, you know, build a network or select switches for a video over IP installation. So you got this video over IP installation coming. What is important for your selection? Is the codec, the type of uh, video over IP, the quality important for your switches? You know what? No. Because from a switch standpoint, good packets, bad packets doesn't exist. We just take those packets and we forward them very fast, very reliably. So you will not choose SDVE technology, for instance, based uh, on, on, on the switch. You will uh, rather choose the SDVE technology based on the quality uh, uh, and uh, uh, the, the overall um, uh, uh, low latency. Second, latency. Is this important for your uh, switch backend for the selection? No, because switches move packets with a latency that is measured in microseconds, okay? So this is one millisecond divided by a thousand. So for video frames, for AV over IP, it's not relevant because AV over IP measures latency in milliseconds. So you will not select this or that switch based on latency. All switches are way much faster than that and it's not relevant. What is important is next, bandwidth. Obviously, by selecting the great SDVoE technology, you are going to talk about 10 gig Ethernet. So for sure, 10 gig Ethernet switches shall be used. Makes sense. If you go with any other type of 1 gig AV technology, well, a lot of compression, so a lot of latency, quality is down, but you can go with 1 gigabit switches, okay? Second important parameter when you know after the bandwidth which switch you're going to take, 
this is multicast because now you know that without IGMP snooping and IGMP querier, you just can't make that happen. Okay? So given is 10 gigabit switch and switching platform capable of IGMP snooping and IGMP querier. There is a third one that is almost mandatory that we didn't uh, talk about yet called IGMP fast leave. What it is? For instance, you are on your phone while traveling, but you still want to watch that game with IPTV. You will then select your channel, right? When you push the button, I want the second channel. You want that happen quite fast. So the IGMP query and the IGMP snooping is very much accelerated with the IGMP fast leave. It happens instantly. So my key can be selected and can, can be the channel can be uh, selected instantly, okay? So the IGMP fast leave is a third important requirement when it comes to select a backend switch. So I want to give you uh, two examples. Let's say that you have a very simple installation coming. You have only one switch because you have a few encoders and you have a few displays with your decoders and you are, your task is to install that, right? And to, to, to put together the video IP network. So you will select one switch and your requirement after that you know that it's one gigabit or 10 gigabit is to just control that IGMP snooping, query and fast leave is correctly there and enabled, configured, okay? If you have those three, you're good to go and you will have your video over IP installation, any type of video over IP installation working. That's fairly simple. Now, my little advice this morning, should you have to do that, go and select and configure those three across the entire default VLAN on the switch. That's much faster than doing that for every port one by one. <laughs> Okay, so when there is a configuration, go across the VLAN, that's more elegant, it's faster, and so that you don't forget one port when you have a single default VLAN, such as the VLAN 1. Well, now, if you have a customer this time with many buildings, you may need several switches, okay? And well, uh, did I tell you that uh, multicast, the same, compared with VLANs, it's really not meant, basically, to go from one switch to the other. You know, <laughs> so that's tricky because you see the yellow lines, you will have those links in between switches, those connections interconnect. You will have to do something in order to allow for the IGMP snooping uh, to, to flow from one switch to the other. So unfortunately, IGMP snooping, querier and fast leave are not sufficient there, okay? You need something else. You need to enable a multicast wiring mode on the yellow links. Multicast wire is the name of that feature on those switches, and you need to enable that in order to let the IGMP messages flow, okay? And then you can have a multi-switch installation. Between you and me, I'm here today with my SDVE hat, right? So I'm not Netgear anymore, but my best advice here is don't do that this way. Instead, you will select stackable switches, stackable switches, and then you are going to form a stack. What is a stack? Well, that's a group of switches. Uh, so you, you got to select stackable switches within a stackable family. And by forming a stack, you will actually build a single switch. So you will have a single management plane, a single control plane, and you will actually virtualize those three switches somehow via software, and the, the three switches will behave as a single switch. What is the direct effect of that? If you do not have any more different switches, you do not need any more any kind of multicast warning whatsoever in between, because your stack will be a single switch, with the IGMP querier and the IGMP snooping, you're good to go. <coughs> Super easy, okay? 
So that's my second best advice today. Configure IGMP at the VLAN level and do a stack, okay? Much easier. So, uh, I want to show that, okay? Let's say you go with a Netgear switch. That's a you know a typical Netgear web interface. You could do that using command line, but the web GUI is good for the for the for the for the example. The first thing I want to do, I want to configure IGMP snooping. So I'm going to go to the layer two tab switching, click on multicast, and go to configuration and enable the admin mode globally for IGMP across my switch. Then I will go to the multicast IGMP VLAN configuration as I told you I am going to enable IGMP on that VLAN default VLAN 1 I'm going to enable the fast leave and I'm going to enable the querier okay and I'm good to go I did three small things that cost me maybe 25 seconds now I need to specifically configure the querier I click on query configuration and I'm going to enable that VLAN one in it. That's it. IGMP VLAN configuration will give me a, a, uh, the access to the third parameter called fast leave. IGMP snooping, querier, fast leave. I'm going to enable that as well. After these three things, um, there is a, a something that is not mandatory but good to have your switch backend should, you know, discard, ignore, reject, block unknown multicast packets. You don't want to be messed up with somebody else's video, right? So uh, this is a, a typical feature called drop unregistered multicast flooding. It means that the IGMP snooping, when there is something unknown, we just ignore that completely. And uh, fortunately for, for the, for the Netgear switches, this is a uh, very often default behavior. So, what about troubleshooting? If you have some, um, I don't know, issues after that, there is one place to, to go. This is called the multicast table, okay? Because uh, you, this multicast table switches will provide that to you. In such a table, you will see your encoders, sources, and your decoders uh, destinations, okay? Based on their multicast addresses, okay? So remember, the best way to troubleshoot a multicast installation is to inspect the multicast table because if you don't see your products your encoders and decoders in there it means that your IGMP system is not working okay so I've got a good news it's almost the end of today's uh, preso everything I told you was true <laughs> IGMP snooping must be there and configured properly. IGMP querier must be there and configured properly. IGMP fast leave must be there and configured properly. The Netgear 4300 switches that are elected here in this SDV Alliance as you know the, the switch platform of choice for video over IP are pre-configured for that. Okay, so we really tried at Netgear to understand that and provide a good out-of-the-box experience. So you heard me, right? You might need to go stacking. You might need to go some uh, multicast wiring things that might require additional configuration. But for a single switch, uh, out of the box installation, your AV encoders and decoders will be discovered and will be working directly without any kind of configuration because IGMP is already preset. Okay, so that's a good news. This is a, a picture for the 4300 switches. Uh, up there you have 1 gig and 10 gig platforms that are ideal for um, uh, AV or IP installations. I really encourage you to go and review the 96 port modular big boy uh, here on the, on the show uh, because this guy gives you a lot of modularity up to the 96 port count. Netgear is uh, pretty good for video or IP. This is reliable. You have a, a, a lifetime warranty. That's a real one. Uh, it doesn't stop when the product is EOL. You have affordable pricing. Netgear today delivers 10 gigabit for $100 per port in average. And uh, I hope that you today discovered that this multicast is uh, easy to, to use. Thank you for your attention. Any question about multicast, let me know.